Hey everyone, today I want to talk about some really cool ideas that have been coming out uh, of the Berkeley Artificial Intelligence Research on compound AI systems and the shift from models to these compound systems. Now they start off by talking about how some recent AI model benchmarks have all been surpassed by compound systems that have multiple components and they're not just single models. Um, for example, they talk about Google's AlphaCode 2, where they had a carefully engineered system that uses LLMs to generate millions of solutions for a task and then filter them out by set. Uh, and they also have some great other examples like Alpha Geometry um, and the, the mentioned RAG. Uh, which uses multiple components, including the LLM, the retriever, the generator, um, even models like you might have heard of Mixtral, Mixture of Experts, also achieves quite a high performance. And at that time, it was the state of the art uh, for open source models, given such a smaller model size, and it was doing very well. Um, that surprised everyone. GPT-4 is also thought to be basically a mixture of experts. Right, And they come out with a few different principles of why to use compound AI systems, um, which are really interesting. The first one is that some tasks are easier to improve via system design. Now, I think about this as you have, you know, let's take RAG for example, right? RAG, um, basically what it does Retrieval augmented generation is that you can take um, large documents of chunks and you can query, um, you can ask questions over it. Um, and RAG helps you to figure out what chunks you need to ask these questions on. Um, you know, some of these newer models also have really long context windows, like tens of thousands of to tokens. And some of the Gemini models have, in principle, like a million tokens. But Sometimes it's just improve, it's easier to uh, improve performance through the system design around RAG, around RAG parameters, um, as compared to just, you know, training a large language model to accept like all the tokens in the world. Um, you can have other constraints that, you know, will come about in some of these other uh, topics here. Okay, so the second one is that systems can be dynamic. So in this case, think about, let's say you have a user manual and you want to you want customers to you know chat around it and ask questions. Now, your user manual might get outdated in five years, right? So now, if you have a single large language model and you're training and retraining or the new user manuals, you'd have to figure out how to avoid hallucinations where it's not giving like old information, right? How would you scrub out this old information? Do you retrain now on the new document for a lot? Um, whereas if you use compound AI systems like, you know, RAG, and you just used a different set of documents, you can design your systems around them. Um, the third one is improving control and trust. So in this case, you know, if you try to build like one large language model that is really good at a certain task and also really safe and secure, that's going to be very hard. Um, instead, you might have like a, a filtration system like a PII detector, um, or you can have um, a special uh, LLM safety model like LamaGuard that, you know, in combination uh, solves these issues. And then finally, performance goals uh, vary widely. So think about like you have one large language model that's being trained for uh, one particular task, let's say for, you know, um, right now we have these general purpose models, right? Um, so you might use one model for uh, draft creation. Um, but now, if you wanted to, let's say, have a complex workflow where um, you're calling models multiple times, you're, you're making a nice draft of, let's say, like a Wikipedia article or, or a book, and you're trying to figure out you know, how to make these section headers very nice and things like that, it's going to be really hard if you're training just like one model uh, to make some large document, to like make a patent, things like that, right? So instead, you might have multiple models, right? One model uh, makes these various sections, one model makes an outline, one model plans. And, you know, I'm starting to s slowly talk about things like 
agents, right? Which I'll talk about a little bit more in a bit. But as you can see that this system design uh, might help much better than just having one language model uh, around trying to do everything, right? In general, we've been doing system design and system design has been a very important component for all software systems, right? For all machine learning systems. So it makes just a ton of sense to also have these compound AI systems. Um, and now let me talk about, let me try to, you know, interpret these results and uh, put it in a framework that is easily digestible, right? So compound AI systems are, in my view, an, an encapsulation of RAG uh, and a few other components, right? So in this case, this compound AI system, you can think of as um, an LLM orchestrator, and this has various components, including database retrieval, which is RAG. Um, you could have web search. You could have a history, which is chatting and you're keeping a cache. You could have agents doing various tasks. Um, you could have other kinds of connectors like uh, SQL access or maybe some um, document extractors, things like that. And then all of this coming together would give you the right outputs. Um, so notice that this has various components around it. And what I want to do now is talk about various um, ad advances that has been, have been made in generative AI across some of these uh, key components. All right, so one of them is RAG. And you can see here, this is basically uh, conceptualizing RAG where you have a user query. And then what happens is that user query um, is then queried with the database to get the relevant context. And that context comes back for the augmentation, goes to the LLM, um, and then gets an output. But there are many aspects that you can improve on from the standard RAG approach um, or get just get more detailed on, right? Um, the other thing, is to optimize um, LLMs for tasks, right? So what you can do is you can think about prompt engineering or automated prompt engineering. Um, and this could also be a very important component of compound AI systems, where now instead of you manually making a prompt, uh, you have something like DSPy come in. Um, and if you haven't, please watch my video on DSP, DSPy, where essentially, uh, in the same way that you optimize machine learning systems, you're just optimizing prompts. Uh, and this idea, I think, is really cool where you're now having, like, you're training um, a prompt where you have the input to the prompt and you have the output, um, and then you're just training the English um, in the prompt. And this is really fascinating for me um, because now you can automate a lot of the... Um, handholding that's necessary for prompt engineering. And coming back to optimizing RAG systems, there are various parameters like um, the number of chunks that you have, right? 100, 300, um, you know, 1, 3, 5, 7 here uh, are the chunk size that, that, you're, that you're having. Um, you know, you're, you're having large documents. Should you make them into maximum chunk sizes of 100? tokens or 300 or 500 or what have you. Uh, what embedding model should you use? Um, what generative LLM model should you use? Um, these are all parameters that you need to optimize in RAG systems. Um, and apart from these standard parameters, there have also been really interesting innovations um, just in the retrieval um, aspect. Um, and self-RAG is one example here where the authors develop a clever way um, to basically to, to figure out if the retrieved context is relevant or not uh, to a query. There's another innovation called Hide. And Hide is super cool because what Hide does is you have an input query, Hide creates a hypothetical document, um, and then based on that, the embeddings of that hypothetical document it figures out where, whether um, the actual documents are relevant or not. Um, I think the main, one of the main advantages I can see of this is 
when you're computing just embeddings of very small que queries, um, that might not do very well when you compare the embedding of a small query versus a large document, right? Um, embedding models are trained on certain representative kinds of text. So now if you convert that query, if you essentially elongate it to a hypothetical document, uh, you can potentially get more richer information in the embedding models um, during things like uh, semantic search retrieval can be better. Um, another technique is re-ranking. It's a simple technique, but it's quite powerful, um, where basically you're now develop a, developing a model to re-rank the retrieved context uh, in a particular order. Um, Flare is a technique that combines retrieval with internet searches. Um, and, and so these are just a few examples of things you can optimize for uh, RAG. Now, the other thing that I want to talk about is optimizing the number of LLM calls you make, how you make these calls, um, and agents are the paradigm for that. So what agents do is basically you ask a question and, a and the agents are able to route that into multiple large language model calls and then combine them together to answer that question. In this case, this person is asking a question, how much did the revenue increase uh, between Q1 of 2024 and Q2 of 2024? As you can see, um, this is a complicated question uh, because this might be in some context, um, but it it you know it might not give you a very good answer in this case because it needs to do multiple calculations. It needs to first calculate the revenue of Q1 of 2024. Uh, what that's one LLM call. Another LLM call is to calculate the revenue in Q2 of 2024, and then these numbers differences needs to be uh, calculated, right? So this is the power that agents offer. Um, and you know you can think of so many different abstractions, so many different things that you can possibly do uh, by figuring out in an intelligent way how to do uh, agents. There is also some interesting work um, you know, practically take, taking this concept of agents um, and then doing a task like making long Wikipedia articles. This is really interesting because as of now, um, you know, the, you can use ChatGPT for asking a few questions or, or coding and things like that, uh, but you, you can't really create comprehensive articles uh, in a certain style, right? Um, this work is now showing that you can create these long style Wikipedia articles. Um, maybe even in the future, you could um, create books, right? Um, fiction books probably. Um, so what you can see here is that you have a topic and just from that topic, um, you need to get references and you need to have an outline and then put those uh, references in the right outline format and you can get a full uh, length article out of it. Now, as you can see, there are so many aspects to optimizing uh, compound AI systems, right? Uh, there's the RAG aspect, there's the multiple LLM calls aspect, there's the making calls to uh, you know, external internet sources, and, and maybe even more, right? So how do you optimize all of these systems? Um, so here's my just a very high level idea, right? So think about it as you have some minimal inputs. So maybe a user input like a, like a query or a topic. And then you have an action space. This action space is all the various, you know, rag you can do, uh, multiple LLM calls, um, internet searches, etc. Um, and then based on this action space, um, you would need to get um, an output, right? So now what you need to do is you need to make sure that you're doing the right actions and optimize these actions. So this might mean optimizing various retrieval parameters, uh, optimizing chunking, optimizing embedding model, optimizing the number of LLM calls that you make, right? But what if you could all, you could you know, take this the same way that you've that we've been doing um, 
machine learning optimization using functions like grid search CV. Uh, but in this case, you're optimizing parameters around compound AI systems. This I think would be really powerful and uh, open up some interesting use cases. All right, thank you all so much uh, for watching. And I hope this was a good introduction to compound AI systems for you. Uh, feel free to like and subscribe. And I will see you all very soon in data science in everyday life. Bye.